Hello everybody, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. In this video we're going to design a Continuous Time Butterworth filter in MATLAB uh, starting from the specifications like I'm showing here. This video does assume that you've already watched the previous video on finding filter specifications, how we define filter specifications. So if you haven't watched that one already, put this one on hold, go back and watch that one to get filled in on how we talk about filter specifications and define them and then come back here and see how to use them. Okay, so moving forward, the, the example I'm going to work on today is that we have a, a low-pass filter we want to design as a Butterworth filter. Uh, and Butterworth filters are nice because they're maximally flat. When this finishes, it won't have ripples in either band, so it'll be a, fil a filter that looks something kind of like... Oh, I haven't drawn it very well. It's, it needs to be steeper than I just drew it. but it won't have any ripples. It'll just smoothly go from pass band to stop band. And the specification we're going to, to use for this is we say within the pass band, which is we're going to pass frequencies less than 600 hertz with a gain that's between 0.995 and 1.005. And then the stop band needs to start by 900 hertz, which is 2 pi times 900 when we write it in radian frequency. And we need the gain for everything in the stop band to be less than 0.005. So in order to get this filter, well, first of all, we already have our omega s and omega p. We know MATLAB is going to want them in radian form when I look at the, uh, the help for the, the function, which I'll do in a second. I'll show you in a second. So omega p is 2 pi times 600. Omega s is 2 pi times 900. And then we need to get the filter tolerances in dB. So to do that, we first have to figure out what the delta 1 and delta 2 are, the stop band and pass band ripples. Well, we know this upper edge is 1 minus delta 1. This lower edge is 1 minus delta 1. So I have 1 plus delta 1 to 1 minus delta 1. And actually to find the pass band edge, it's always the lower edge that controls it. In MATLAB, the, the, uh, the ripple in dB will be minus 20 times the log base 10 of 1 minus delta 1. So this 1 minus delta 1 here is the lower edge is 0.995. Uh, pulling out my trusty calculator, that is minus 0 0.043 dB. But 0.04 is probably close enough. Well, we'll We'll just have MATLAB compute it directly in a second anyways. Similarly, for the pass band, or sorry, for the, that's the pass band ripple. For the stop band, I just need minus 20 times the log of delta 2, which here is 0.05. So if I plug that into my calculator, it's 26 dB down, and just by historical convention, MATLAB wants this as a positive number, even though it's how many dB down it is. Oh, and it's the same thing here. This is just based on, you know, back in the days before computers, we had big tables of filter design parameter lookup things, and they were always given in terms of how many dB down things were. So my pass band needs to be within uh, point oh, no more than 0.043 dB down. Remember, the, the ideal gain here of 1 if I take 20 log 10 of that, is at 0 dB. So if I'm thinking in a dB scale, my ideal gain is 0. I'm saying when I look down from that, my pass band needs to not go below 0 0.04 dB. This is 0 dB. But it says by the time I get to the stop band, this distance down needs to be at least 26 dB down by the time I get to 900 hertz here. All right, so these are my parameters I use in MATLAB. So I'm going to pause here for a minute switch over to show you the, the MATLAB help function for the Butterworth command, and then I'll show you my script for how I set this up and run it. When we're designing a filter, there's really two steps to this. The first is, is finding the, uh, the order of the filter based on the specifications. And so this is uh, the Butterworth order is, is command is the B-U-T-T-O-R-D, a uh, back, uh, unfortunate name left over from the day when uh, all functions had to be eight letters or less originally in the early versions of MATLAB. And it needs four parameters. It, it needs the passband frequency. Uh, oh, I should 
very important, mentioned by default. By default, MATLAB wants to do discrete time filters. To make it be continuous time, you have to put this S as an optional last command, in which case omega P and omega S are radians per second, so that's 2 pi times hertz. RP and RS, on the other hand, are the attenuations, the passband of no more than RP attenuation in dB and RS. So that's the way we've set it up. Unfortunately, all these examples are still discrete time. But what that gives us is n, which is the filter order, and omega n, which is the other parameter I need for a Butterworth filter. Once I have that, I can go use the butter command to design the filter. Right, so I can take those two parameters here, and now I call the butter command, which we go, takes in the filter order n and the omega n, which is the, uh, the, the design parameter for an nth order low pass filter, and it gives me the B and A coefficients, where these are the coefficients of the derivatives of X from the, or I guess these are the numerator coefficients of H of J omega, and these are the denominator coefficients of H of J omega. We've also seen uh, what those uh, are in terms of we can turn those back into a differential equation if we need to. But luckily for you, MATLAB does all this work behind the hood, and we'll also even be able to find, or uh, underneath the hood, and we'll be able to find the frequency response directly using MATLAB commands as well. So now that we've talked about the, the, the two commands we're going to use, let me show you my script setting this up to find it and then plot the results. Okay, so moving over to the editor here, we can see here's my, I'm defined my omega p, my passband is in radians, so it's 2 pi times 600 hertz is the edge of the passband, omega s is 2 pi times 900 hertz. I also found my ripples, my delta 1, since it went from 1.005 to 0.05, I'm sorry, 1.005 to 0.995, that meant delta 1 was 0.005. Right, let me just refresh your memory. Right, hopping back here, just to remind us, if this is my, my range, this is telling me delta 1 had to be 0.005, right, to get this range around 1. And similarly, for uh, delta 2, my stop band ripples 0.05. I then need to find the edges in dB. I always, for the pass band, I always use 1 minus delta 1. I guess I call this R1 here instead of RP. Uh, this would be really, to be consistent with what I said earlier, this should be RP and RS. So let me fix that. It's not really that important what I call them as long as I pass them to Butterworth in the right order here. But I've got minus 20 times, again, log 10. You know, pro tip on MATLAB, don't accidentally goof and say log instead of log 10. It's easy to forget that. I've done it several times and, and, and cost myself time trying to figure out why things weren't acting right until I caught that. So log base 10, 1 minus delta 1 is the pass band ripple. RS is, is the stop band ripple, right? So that's delta 2. Then I can go and say here's my pass band, stop band frequencies, ripple for pass band, stop band ripple, and very, very important to tell it we want a continuous time, not discrete time filter, got to have this little s here. Very easy to forget it. Very fatal if you do. You'll get a beautiful discrete time filter that does not solve your continuous time problem. I'll get back to filter order and then the, the parameter here, the omega n for the Butterworth. I can then use that to design, put past those into the butter command. Again, very important with this little quote string s here to say I'm in continuous time to find the filter. I could then go find the frequency response in MATLAB. I can use omega as 2 times pi. I'm going to do a linear space of 4,000 frequencies from 0 uh, to 2,000. <clears throat> and I'm going to use that, uh, these omegas, right? So this is from 0 to 2 kilohertz, and I multiply them all by 2 pi, determine the radians, and use the freq s command, F-R-E-Q-S. This is the continuous time frequency response, where these are the numerator coefficients, the ace comes second, or the denominator coefficients, and then these are the frequencies to evaluate it at. Then everything from here down is just plotting things and also putting them on an axis with the, uh, with the, the tolerances around them. So let me run it and show you the plots we get. So here are the two figures I get. The first one in figure one, this is just the overall frequency response going from zero to two kilohertz. I've, I've kept this axis in hertz now rather than radians. Uh, but we can see it's a nice flat filter in the passband until it starts to roll off here. Looks like it's around 600 hertz. We'll zoom in to be sure. And then it gets pretty small by the time we get to a kilohertz and it's just zero essentially beyond that. It's not actually zero, but it's so small we can't see it on this scale. 
And figure two, I zoom in on the two regions, the pass band and the stop band. So the pass band, uh, I've, I've plotted it so that this is the tolerance. The upper edge is one plus delta one, lower is one minus delta one. And we can see because the blue line stays inside this box from zero to 600 hertz, the filter does in fact meet the specification for the pass band. It stays within the tolerances up to 600 hertz. And then this edge here is at 900 hertz up to 2000. And we can see again, this is from zero to delta two, and it does just stay within the box. So I've met the, the, the filter specification here. I can go back to the original MATLAB window now and see I can get my coefficients for A and B and N. Right, when I look at the MATLAB window here, N, the filter order is 14th order filter. So that tells me <clears throat> that I have up to four, 14th derivatives, if you think of it. Though it's usually more to think about how many uh, resistors and capacitors, etc., I'm going to need to build this out of electronics to make this continuous time filter. But that is a story for another day. What we have here are the A and B coefficients and the frequency response. So we say this, this would be a theoretical design for a continuous time system that met the specification. All right, so I'm going to stop this video here. Uh, and that's given us the whole story of today of, of how magnitude and phase affect a filter. And as we move to non-ideal filters, how we specify them with tolerances. And finally, how we use those tolerances and the MATLAB filter design uh, functions for Butterworth to design those. They're very similar functions as you see here for Chebyshev type 1, Chebyshev type 2, elliptical filters, Bessel fi filters. There are many other related filters. You can even use the filter design toolbox once you get more practiced with it. Uh, but at least this is one to get you started, and most of them have similar format. And again, a very common theme is don't forget that little S in quotes, the string, when you're doing continuous time to tell it that's what you need. All right, I'll uh, see you next time.